Hello viewers, after a recent Facebook exchange, I decided to do a video on image macros like these. These things go viral semi-often online, and in a recent Facebook exchange, I tried to explain why healthcare professionals and the government hand out things like free condoms or run free methadone clinics, but don't fund projects like free insulin for diabetics or free tampons for women. Essentially, it all comes down to cost savings. First, let's look at this one. The claim in this image is that it's somehow wrong or unethical to give drug addicts methadone when we won't give insulin to diabetics. Here's part of the Facebook exchange that prompted me to do this video. I censored the names and images of the people involved, including my own. I think you can tell which are mine. The argument is that diabetics don't choose to be diabetic, while addicts do choose to be addicted. The two afflictions are dubbed diseases, despite drug addiction not actually being a disease, and are falsely equivocated together. Then the people arguing for this point make emotional appeals, demanding that addicts not receive help over diabetics, or that diabetics receive insulin for free as well. But what they fail to realize, and what you can read in the comments in the comments I posted, is that the government, when they do this type of thing of setting up free methadone clinics or hand out methadone and free needles, they're doing it to try and save money. This article posted on March of 2016 by the National Post states that in Ontario there is over 50,000 people on methadone treatment. This treatment is costing Ontario $156 million per year to run. That sounds like a lot, but when you do the math dividing $156 million by 50,000 people, the low number of the user estimate, that equates to $3,120 per year to treat someone with methadone. This is actually low because this study, which I cited in the previous Facebook exchange, pegs the cost should have been higher at around $5,651 back in 2010. So if anything, the current numbers show that estimate I posted on Facebook was even high. But then at the time, I was just doing a quick Google search and not fully researching for a video on the subject. So, we know it costs less than $3,120 a year to treat people with methadone, but how does this save everyone money? Well, let's look at the statistics for overdoses. Most of the statistics I found for all of Ontario just list deaths. They don't tell you how many non-fatal drug overdoses there are, but I did find a source for Toronto alone, Ontario's capital, that does display these numbers. Keep in mind, this site updates regularly, so the numbers may have changed by the time you check my source. These were the numbers when I researched this. In six months in Toronto, from August 7, 2017 to January 1st of 2018, a total of 1,328 non-fatal drug overdoses were treated, and 94 people died from drug overdose. Let that sink in for a moment. 94 people died, and we managed to save 1,328 people. That's a pretty good track record for saving lives, but also really disheartening when you look at Ontario's stats. In Ontario in 2016, more than 850 people have died from opioid drug overdose. That seems like a low number to some considering how many people live in Ontario, but what this number doesn't tell you is how many people overdosed and lived. I couldn't find a decent study that outlines how many people are admitted for drug overdose. This study by the Canadian Institute of Health Information, for example, pegs the total ER visits for heroin and certain synthetic opioids at a total of 1,573 from 2016 to 2017. But Toronto alone is reporting close to that number in six months, so we know this isn't accurate. According to this article from Stat News, it costs between $58,000 to $92,000 in the U.S. for each patient to be treated for an opioid overdose. Sadly, I couldn't find a source for the cost in Ontario per visit, only a gross cost. And given our healthcare system, I doubt we can get an accurate number given how we can't even get an accurate number of how many people OD. So I'll be using the low end of Boston's per patient costs for now. Using Toronto's numbers, we have 1,422 people admitted for opioid overdose. This includes those that lived and those that died. Multiply by 58,000, the low estimate for Boston, and you get a total of $82,476,000. This is the cost for six months. Double that to account for one year, and the cost of opioid doses jumps to $164,952,000. We spend 
million dollars on methadone treatment for all of Ontario, but we also spent at least 165 million on overdoses for just Toronto alone. Ontario has over four times the number of deaths over the year that Toronto had. So if they had similar survival rates, Ontario as a whole could cost four times this amount. So why do we provide methadone? Because overdoses are expensive. According to the California Society of Addiction Medicine, methadone maintenance is associated with a success rate ranging between 60 and 90 percent, meaning anywhere from 60 to 90 percent of people addicted to other substances when put on methadone maintenance treatment can kick their addiction to harder drugs. This puts them at a much lower rate of overdose. By having them receive a stable and safe amount of injected methadone, we reduce substance abuse, HIV and AIDS spread, cost on welfare assistance as these addicts rejoin the workforce and society, and more. So spending the $156 million on methadone treatments saves us a lot more money in the long term. If an overdose costs the country even as low as $58,000 and methadone costs $3,120 per year, you can fund over 18 people for a year at the cost of one overdose. And even with the extreme low end of 60% success rate, 10 of these 18 people will live and never OD, if not the majority of them. We give out methadone to try and save lives, and in turn save us all money on our taxes. That's why they do it. But why don't we give insulin to diabetics? Because of the cost. According to the Canadian Diabetes Association, there are 1.5 million Ontarians with diabetes, roughly 10% of the population. Each and every one pays from $1,889 to $2,594 for maintaining their insulin levels either through pumps or injection. This means if we were to give every single diabetic insulin on the public dime, assuming the low end of $1,889, it would cost an absolute bare minimum of $2,833,500,000. And this isn't without the added cost of maintaining the bureaucracy of running such a system. So on one hand, we have a methadone system we use to reduce drug use, save lots of lives, and save taxpayers money. And on the other hand, we have a proposed insulin system where, were it implemented, would only cost the taxpayer money with a minimal benefit to anyone but the insulin patients themselves for over 18 times the cost of the methadone system. This reasoning is also why we give out free condoms, but not free tampons. Condoms can be used by both men and women. And no, I don't mean in that ridiculous notion of some women have penises. Men and women can both carry condoms. Both can assist the guy wears one. Either the guy provides his own, or the woman can provide one to him. Both parties are responsible for safe sex. By handing out condoms, we reduce the cost of the healthcare, welfare, court, and adoption systems. I won't get into the statistics. I did that enough with the methadone versus insulin part. But the same reasoning applies. Handing out a few cheap condoms means fewer unwanted pregnancies, especially among teenagers. This means less money spent on these kids giving birth or getting an adoption. Less money spent on welfare for single parents. Less money spent on courts for custody and child support. Less money spent on adoption services for unwanted children. The list goes on and on. Tampons, however, don't really save anyone money. Children get their tampons from their parents, whom split the cost. Couples share income, so the man in a heterosexual marriage is paying for half of the tampons one way or the other, since they share a common pool of income and expenses. Aside from homosexual couples or families with disproportionate genders among their children, on average about half of the tampon cost is absorbed by men. It's not an expense that women alone pay unless they're single. So, requesting the government to collect more taxes so they can then hand a portion of that money right back to you to pay for tampons is silly. If a box of tampons cost $10, a heterosexual couple would pay that $10, $5 each, plus administrative costs just to get that same $10 back. This type of system only helps single women by making single men pay a portion of their tampons, and at the cost of the huge bureaucratic machine costing even more money to run just to make it happen. It's generally cheaper and easier on everyone to let people buy their own tampons. This issue is often trotted out by social justice and feminist ideologues to trump up the idea of patriarchy without actually examining the issue at hand. They ignore nuance for, but my feels. Anyways, that's it for me. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to contact me directly, you can contact me via email at madskeptic at gmail.com or message me on Twitter. If you want to keep up to date on when I post videos, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, I will see you next time.